Well, my friends, welcome back to Jimmy at the Crossroads, coming to you in partnership with the Washington Examiner. So great to be continuing with you, and especially today with a tremendous group that is fighting the good fight in Congress in the minority, although I think next year we have to change that. They are all brand new to Congress as of January of this year. Two of them have been on Jimmy at the Crossroads before. One, well, I'm so pleased to be having on for the very first time. Let's welcome three Congresswomen who have just voted on the floor of the United States House of Representatives from the great state of Colorado, where I am at. It is. U.S. Representative Lauren Boebert of CD3 in Colorado. In the middle, Congresswoman Kat Kamak of Florida's 3rd Congressional District. And then we have Congresswoman Lisa McClain of Michigan's 10th District. Again, they are all fresh women. They are fighting the good fight. There we go. There we go. Well played, Mr. Matouche, producer extraordinaire. Ladies, Congresswoman, welcome to the program. It's so good to have you. I got Jimmy at the crossroads, making sense out of nonsense. Come on, Jimmy, what you got? Thank you for coming on today. We're going to dive into several topics. But first, I, I just I love something about this. And I know Representatives Boebert and Kamak, you both are familiar with this because you're the individuals here. But Congresswoman Boebert, you're a Florida native. You're representing the 3rd Congressional District in Colorado. Kat Kamak, you are a Colorado native representing the 3rd Congressional District in Florida. What kind of flip-flop is that? What's that like? <laughs> We're taking over the world. You know, I think it is uh, that is I'm easily amused, but I find that utterly hysterical and too much fun. And I know that all three of you have become good friends already, fast friends in Congress. And I'm curious what that dynamic is like when you are and feel free, whoever wants to jump in when you are coming in as uh, freshmen into the U.S. House of Representatives, you have that freshman class, you're getting oriented, you're meeting people, you're figuring things out. What is that like, and what is it like to build relationships with people in Congress that you'd never met or worked with before? Well, well for me, I've never been in politics. Uh, I've spent, you know, 30 plus years in business, and relationships rule the world. And I can't tell you how much I appreciate both Kat and Lauren they have traditional values, they're like-minded people, but more than that, they're good, genuine people who have been very warm and welcoming to me, not to mention we have, we have a heck of a lot of fun. That's right. Absolutely. That's right. Well, and if you look at uh, what Nancy Pelosi did to really ruin our freshman orientation and, uh, and being sworn in, it's really phenomenal to have good people like Kat and Lisa here to be friends with and to lean on in this time and, and just uh, be able to, to build one another up because, uh, unfortunately, leadership here has done everything that they can to tear us down, to separate us, to divide us, and to keep us isolated. So I think this camaraderie is very much needed. It time. brings us closer together as opposed Absolutely. to farther apart. It, it's really working the opposite. Well, and I think even more broadly, you look at the freshman class today, the 117th Congress, the conservative freshmen who came in are incredible, really a class of total badasses. And to be a part of this, it's so incredibly humbling. It's truly a privilege to serve. I know all of us, when we walk in the Capitol every day, we still get those butterflies. We still look up and think, oh my gosh, how did we get here? And I can't think of two better women to serve alongside with who are hard workers, intelligent, truly badasses in their own right. And the thing that I love about particularly the women of this 117 class is that not one of us campaigned on being a woman. Mm -hmm. We campaigned on being the best person for the job. And not because we check a box, 
but because we really care and love our country, we love our states, our communities, and and like Lisa said, and like Warren said, we have a whole heck of a lot of fun, but we also are doing things uh, that haven't been done before, so we're excited. Yeah, and if you can't tell, um, I tweet, Lisa sings, and Kat cusses. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, well, Lisa, I play the harmonica, as you noticed there, so maybe we can have a duet sometime. Uh, you know, it is always a treat to, to get to know a little bit of that personal side. And one thing, uh, Congresswoman Boebert, that you were mentioning is the challenge, especially with Pelosi and how she brought things in in January. Like you were sworn in amidst the pandemic and things were not normal, and yet you fostered those relationships. You did everything that you could, despite that, to work together and to build something. And that's what I want to get at, is from the personal side, that's all important because it really builds that camaraderie. But Congresswoman Boebert, how does that manifest itself when you're actually in the trenches there in Congress fighting for liberty and the Constitution against this radical agenda of President Biden and Nancy Pelosi? Well, Jimmy, being here in this, uh, you, you know the the layout of Colorado and the questions that are asked. People want to know, are you going to be bipartisan? Colorado is very purple, and uh, they want to know if you're going to work with the other side. And being here in this environment uh, shows me that Democrats have no intention of working with the other side. They have no intention of unity. They have no intention of being bipartisan. We only vote on Democrat legislation. And even if a privileged resolution is brought by the minority party, they vote it down, they table it immediately because they don't want to vote on Republican legislation. Uh, we all have uh, legislation that has been introduced that we will not have an opportunity to vote on. I even have um, my Protecting American Energy Jobs Act, which would tremendously help Colorado and our entire nation and even have global impacts if we were able to get that passed. And so I have a discharge petition to try to get 218 signatures so we can force this legislation to the floor for a vote. Kat has a piece of legislation that she has a discharge petition on as well that uh, I'll let her talk about. Um, but, you know, we are using these tools of the minority to try to get the message out, expose the Democrat policies, their radical agenda. It is more extreme than any of us could have ever imagined. And we're showing that we have policies that actually work for our districts, work for our states, and work for our country. Absolutely. You know, and to that point, uh, Lauren was talking about discharge petitions. It's really the only tool in the toolbox that we have as uh, the minority party right now, just for 18 months and then we're coming back at you. But um, that discharge petition is so critical for us to be able to bypass the committee process, bypass the speaker. In the case of the Born Alive Protection, uh, Abortion Protection Survivors Act, we have had that piece of legislation blocked by Nancy Pelosi over 75 times, 75 times. And at this point, this is not a pro-life, pro-choice debate. This is wow. a child who has survived an abortion attempt is outside the womb, and this legislation says that not only does the doctor have to deliver life-saving care to that child, but then the medical professionals in the room have to report it, because this is something that is occurring on a daily basis, and no one is talking about it, because by law, it's not having to be reported. And so when you talk about the discharge petition, you need 218 signatures to bring it to the floor. Today, I have 213 signatures on that discharge petition, five. There are more than two dozen Democrats who have claimed that they are either Catholic or pro-life. Yet Nancy Pelosi is holding this hostage, saying that she will strip committee assignments. She will definitely make sure that life is a living hell for these Democrats who sign on to this. But I know that Americans will always stand up for the life of the unborn. I know that Americans across this country demand that if a child survives an abortion attempt, that that doctor should, by law, be required to fight for the life of that child. And I just, I'm, I'm so adamant about this because this right here is going to be the tell. Who are we as Americans? Who are we as a country? If we won't even protect and save the life of a child who has survived an abortion attempt, who are we? And so that's why this discharge petition that we're working on, the discharge petition that Moore is working on to protect American energy, these are so, so critical. And this is what we're fighting every day for us. And I want to pass this off to Lisa, but uh, before I do, with, uh, with this discharge petition, with all of this that we have going on, it just proves that when Democrats come to Washington, D.C., they do not work for the people who elected them. They work for Nancy Pelosi. So even in my district, where I have nine Democrats who are filed to run for my seat, they can make all the promises they want for rural Colorado, but at the end of the day, if they were to get to Washington, D.C., 
They do not work for rural Colorado. They work for Nancy Pelosi, and she claims to be a lioness when it comes to children. Well, Lisa can tell you firsthand what we saw on the southern border when it comes to the children and what they are truly going through right now. Please go ahead, Congresswoman. So we had an opportunity to go down to McCallum uh, the past couple days, and what we saw was horrific. This is, in my opinion, modern day slavery. The cartels are the only ones that are winning and they're smuggling these illegal immigrants all over our borders. And what we saw at, was it midnight, 1230? We stopped on the side of the road and there was probably 12, 12 people there um, uh, with us. And there was a young girl, maybe seven, eight years old, we actually thought she was dead. Unfortunately, or fortunately, I should say, she was so exhausted that she was just sleeping. We couldn't wake her up. It, I mean, we literally had to shake her and wake her up. But this is an eight-year-old child that is by herself in a foreign country. Think of how sad that is. I mean, as a parent, as a mother, that, that's hor horrific. And what happened to her parents? Did they pass away along the way, uh, up along the ride? I have no idea. It, it, and then we also saw a young little boy, a toddler, maybe two, three years old, um, half clothed by himself. It, it was the saddest experience I've ever seen. And if you think that this is humane, maybe you should come down from your ivory tower and actually go to where the action is. Because we can't fix a problem until we admit that there is a problem. And, and the issue is, because Trump's policies worked, we want to disband all of them. I often say this is, Trump could have the cure for cancer, and we wouldn't want to hear it because of who it came from. And that's the frustrating part to me. If we truly care about America, and we truly care about the people of this country and our districts, we need to start actually working on policy and stop the bully, bullying and the partisanship and put it aside. Hmm. All right, Jimmy, at the crossroads, we're talking with three congresswomen who just entered Congress several months ago in January, Representative Lauren Bolbert of Colorado, Congresswoman Kat Kamak of Florida, and Representative Lisa McLean of Michigan. And on that subject of the board, I want to go back to you, Representative McLean, because it was just such a heart-wrenching story that you were telling of what you saw on the border. Kamala Harris, the vice president, just visited the border. What do you make of her visit down down at the El Paso area in Texas? What I make of it, it was nothing but a publicity stunt. And quite frankly, the border is on the border. Um, I don't think El Paso is that close to the border. And it's definitely not at the epicenter at the center of where all the issues are happening. So let's stop faking it and let's actually do some good work. I thought that's what we're here to do, is actually do some good work for the American people. So to me, j just save it. S stay back in Washington. Don't fake it. Either, either go and do a legitimate, honest attempt or don't bother to go at all. Congresswoman when we saw Kamala oh. go to, sorry, Jimmy, when we saw Kamala go to um, El Paso, it very much was a publicity stunt, or maybe her jet just needs to be refueled, and, uh, and then they would have to use some cameras there. Uh, but she didn't address the true issue. I've been down to the Rio Grande Valley sector now twice, and this is where the surge is taking place. This is where the humanitarian crisis is taking place. The children that Lisa spoke of that we saw just a couple of nights ago, these aren't the criminal aliens that are crossing the border. Uh, these are the decoy that are sent by the cartel. And the true problem is a mile left of the, 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 the station where the Border Patrol agents are and a mile right of, of where their station is. Um, that's where the drugs are crossing. That's where the fentanyl is coming across. This is where um, we, there are rape trees and, uh, and, and human smugglers. Um, this is where the real problem is. The Border Patrol agents are so focused on taking care of the unaccompanied minors that are being sent over by the cartel, but they can't do anything to stop the actual criminals that are coming into our country. And I think Kamala's stop to El Paso 
just proved that President Trump is still leading on the issues. He announced that he was going to go down to the border, and so she said, oh, quick, let me pretend to go there as well. Um, but he actually went to the border. He went to where the crisis is taking place. He met with sheriffs. He met with local police. He met with the Border Patrol agents who are begging for help. They're begging, begging for infrastructure, for technology, for resources, and for support. Yeah, and just, to, I mean, I, I, I think... I think you won't find more passionate advocates than Lisa, Warren, myself. I mean, really, conservatives in the House have been leading while the administration has been watching. Um, like Warren, I have been to the border twice, and I'll actually be there in a few weeks. I'm taking my sheriffs and several sheriffs from Florida, because today, every town in America is a border town. There's no doubt about it. Being the wife of a first responder, I can tell you, my husband comes home and says, I just went to the same guy another time who has been overdosing on fentanyl and heroin. And this is as a direct result of the open borders that we have on the Southwest uh, corridor. And when you talk about every town being a border town, there's fatigue. There's no doubt about it. The, the national news has covered this mostly on Fox and conservative outlets, but people are sick and tired of hearing about it. So we have to continue to drive the narrative and tell the stories. I myself have met with a nine-year-old girl that was picked up in the middle of the night. She couldn't even tell me her name. When I said, como te llamas, she said, uh, uh, she couldn't get it out. And the Border Patrol agent standing next to me had to tell me that they picked her up on a field. She had been screaming so loud and so horrifically that her vocal cords gave out because she was being gang raped. This is a nine-year-old little girl. I have seen with my own eyes the horrific crimes against these children, and yet the White House refuses to take action. So for me personally, I said this months ago, I cannot in good conscience call the man in the White House the commander-in-chief. He is the trafficker-in-chief mm -hmm. because, quite frankly, he is completing the trafficking ring in this cycle for the cartels who are making anywhere from 20 to $25 million a day in just the smuggling of humans. It has no, no impact on the drugs, which are coming over freely. They make so much money that it is a great day in America if you are a member of the cartel. I want to get to the economy in just a moment, but Representative Kamak, something that's coming to my mind. I mean, you and I have one distinction of a decade or more ago, each of us separated by at least like six months or so. We interned for con former Congressman Mike Kaufman of Colorado, 6th Congressional District, and his predecessor who left Congress in two thousand after the 2008 election cycle was former Congressman Tom Tancredo, and illegal immigration was his issue throughout the 2000s. And now we are, what, 13 years removed from when he left office, and this situation, this crisis at the border, has gotten much worse, Congresswoman. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I remember being a high school graduate one month away from graduation in 2006, and I remember I had a classmate, Amber, who was kidnapped and sexually assaulted by an illegal who had been deported six times. But because of the sanctuary cities that welcome and house and protect these illegals who have been continually deported for violent crimes, he was allowed to come back and have safe harbor in, in Colorado. And had, had the law just simply been upheld, he would have never had that opportunity to kidnap, assault, and then lead a high-speed chase down I-25, which resulted in, in this horrific crash, it ruined this, this classmate of mine's life for years. She will live with that moment in time for the rest of her life. Her family has been living with that horrific experience. And I asked Secretary Mayorkas of Homeland Security, how many more Ambers have to be kidnapped before you will take action to secure the border? Because every single town in America is a border town. We are seeing the flood of these migrants being flown at our taxpayer expense, being housed at our expense in cities all across America. And I'm telling you right now, not every single one is here for a good reason or good cause. And you look at the number of gotaways, we're over the 200,000 mark. These are people who are actively avoiding border patrol. This is insane. We have no idea who's in our country and really how detrimental or dangerous they truly are. Well, I, I, real quickly, Congresswoman Boebert and McLean, 
I'm struck by Mayorkas just completely unwilling to acknowledge that we actually have a crisis at the border. And listening to what all three of you are saying, it is even more clear than it already had been to me that there is indeed a crisis at the border. Well, what you have to do as well is follow the money. So I was in a hearing this week uh, um, with this, or last week, maybe it was, um, with the Secretary of Health and Human Services. And I was questioning him and I, and I asked him, do you have a crisis at the border? And he said, no. And then I asked him, do we have a crisis, a pandemic crisis? Do we have a healthcare crisis, a pandemic? Oh, absolutely, COVID, it's a pandemic. I said, great. Then can you explain to me why you diverted $2 billion from the COVID funds and the stockpile funds to deal with the non-crisis at the border? We didn't have a real good answer. <laughs> so again, what I say about President Trump is, like him or not, he was the president who actually told you what he was going to do and then actually did it. Here, you have the shell game going. You don't have any truth. You don't have any transparency. And it's really simple. Follow the money. And Jimmy, I hate to do this, but we have two minutes to go cast our ballots and go vote. So we have to run out of this room because we, we want to cast our vote to make sure that we, we knock down any of Nancy Pelosi's agenda. So we got to go run. Absolutely. Well, thank, thank you, you so all much. three of you for joining us. We really appreciate the time. What a great nice conversation. Thank you. Thanks, Jimmy. I appreciate it. Well played, Mr. Batouge. Yes, indeed. We are so grateful for them squeezing in a little time here on Jimmy at the Crossroads. Again, Congresswoman Lauren Boebert of Colorado in the 3rd Congressional District. Kat Kamak representing Florida's 3rd Congressional District. Again, Representative Kamak a native of Colorado representing Florida's CD3, and then Representative Bobert, a native of Florida representing Colorado's CD3. I'm easily amused. Maybe that's what's going on here, but that is entertaining to me. And then Congresswoman Lisa McLean of the 10th CD of Michigan, all joining us here on Jimmy at the Crossroads for an exclusive group sit-down. And what I thought was so striking is how they... <clears throat> excuse me, how they all were talking early on about the camaraderie and the friendships that they have developed and how that developed. That was just so important to hear because especially in the midst of the pandemic, as we were talking about and how things started in January of this year and, and even before then when they began with orientation, the environment was so different from normal. So what was that like and what has it been like? How have you been able to form these relationships and work together? And what they talked about in the discharge petition, Representative Boebert, Representative Kamak, both pushing forward with the discharge petition. If they can get 218 signatures on a petition, then they can force a vote. And that is fight. That is a fighting spirit that we need in Congress when we have this agenda on so many different areas, not the least of which, as we were talking about, is the U.S. southern border. Make no mistake, there is a crisis at the border. Those stories they were sharing, was, they were absolutely tragic, heartbreaking, and stunning. Stunning that you have, yes, a publicity stunt just so the vice president could say, hey, yeah, I went to the border after dodging the question for so long long she finally does a visit and is able to at least say hey i did it that's not good enough by any stretch of the imagination and she would know the extent just like these three congresswomen who were sharing experiences from the southern border and talking with children in the single digits who had been used and abused by coyotes and others in the most brutal ways imaginable. If that's not a crisis at the southern border, I don't know what is. We need action. But on that discharge petition component, this is something that we need to see more of from the Republicans in pushing forward with an agenda, being very clear on policy. 
Uh, if I recall correctly, Representative Kamak was saying for her discharge petition to protect children who have been born from botched abortions, this is critical, but she's five votes away or five signatures away from forcing a vote on the House floor after Pelosi rejected it 75 times. I, I don't know. So she's supposedly Catholic. I don't know how this is, how that can be. But the reality here is very clear. Republicans in Congress must push back using any tools and levers at their disposal. And that seems to be what at least some members of Congress are doing. If you want to talk about a squad, the left likes to talk about their squad with AOC, Ayanna Presley, Ilhan Omar, and the rest. That's a squad right there that's fighting for the founding principles of this country, and that's pushing forward with an agenda and pushing back. One thing we didn't get to today uh, due to time was Representative Boebert. She absolutely just has a knack for getting uh, the left-wing Twitter into a tizzy. Constantly, she's trending on Twitter. She just somehow gets under their skin. And I find that rather entertaining, but I digress. Bottom line, great conversation. There's a lot more we could get to. Who knows? Maybe we'll have another one, another opportunity to sit down with Congresswomen Boebert, Kamak, and McLean down the line. We will have more congressional interviews, lots of things coming up here on Jimmy at the Crossroads in future programs. Because we're trying to make sense out of nonsense, and you have to do it by talking to the people who are actually trying to make legislation, get it through Congress, and to make things happen for the betterment of this country. Talking politics, great for generations, oh, what makes I got Jimmy at the Crossroads. Making sense out of nothing, no sense. Yeah. <laughs>